Hey, it's Moms vs. Aunts, your weekly happy hour where we chop it up about trends, gossip, solo mom life, and how to level up in this crazy world. Hey, everyone. This is Kiki, your auntie, your favorite auntie here with your favorite mom, Vanessa. Vanessa, what's going on? Hey, girl. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) I know, right? I mean, so much is going on, and I feel like... I've had like a couple of recent conversations with um, friends of ours, good friends, and I found that there was like a tangential thread that kind of sort of linked some of these stories together, which said, in my mind, this is something we should talk about on the podcast. <laughs> like that's what okay, that means. So you had <laughs> you had a bunch of store a bunch of random stories that all connected together in the same idea. Yeah, like they're sort of like loosely related to the same topic. And so I was like, you know what? I was going to call you because, I mean, obviously we talk all the time outside of the podcast, but I decided to save it for Moms versus Aunts because one of them I just want to get your take on. So um, we're going to be talking today about exes and co-parenting, but just definitely want to get you to weigh in on because, yeah, anyway, so we'll do that. Um, And of course, we have the hustle for the week. Um, And I can't wait to hear what you have for the cool down. But we got to start drinking first. And since I was in California, so went to this restaurant You were busy working that day. And so our other friend and I went to this restaurant on your recommendation. I can't remember what it was called. Remind me what the name of that Mexican restaurant was. Sal, Sal, Salazar, maybe? Salazar. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. It was fucking delicious. I've never had an Al Pastor taco that was just this perfect. And I don't even understand what they were doing with like the actual taco shell part was just... Anyhow, LA has such great food. Um, And the other thing I ordered was just like a watermelon agua fresca. And I feel like LA, you just get these really great, like beautiful, fresh juices everywhere. It's like not even a big deal out there. And so when I got- the produce capital. Oh, girl. I was just, yeah. There was something about the fresh produce that just sent me to um, just a really happy place. So when I got back, I've just been making- (laughs) Agua frescas. And so nice. um, so I made this one literally yesterday. And um, and I want to share this one with you guys. So we're going to spike it because that's what we do. But it was it's a cantaloupe agua fresca. So I started with a whole cantaloupe. If anyone's following along, here's the recipe. I also will post this on my Instagram, which I've been a little slow at. And I promise I'm going to put all of the last several recipes up tomorrow. Um, So you guys will have everything and you can look back. And I'm going to create a highlight reel for them so you can just find all the recipes in one place. But so this is a cantaloupe agua fresca, which we're going to spike with vodka. But I started with a whole cantaloupe. And I put, uh, diced it, obviously took the rind off, put the whole thing in the blender. Um, You're gonna use about three to four cups of also water, like filtered water if you have it. Um, And then you have to strain it. So that's like the biggest thing. I have like a fine mesh strainer that I love using. So I, I, no matter what I'm making, if it's like a fresh juice, I always kind of strain it and then I strain it again. So, you, cause you get that weird frothy thing. You know, have you ever like blended fruit? I get never, all that weird... I have never blended my own fruit. So I don't really, <laughs> I just usually <laughs> buy it in a, in a bottle already, already blended for me. <laughs> I'm, this is so easy. You're like the test of like, is anybody really going to do this? You're like, mm, no, I think they sell that next door. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, no. It's so easy. And then you end up with so much more. Imagine like how much more of this you have. You can put it in the fridge and it gets nice and cold. So you want to like just make sure you strain it like two times so it, it's really nice and it's like a clean, fresh juice without any of the little like 
um, foamy stuff that happens. Um, also add the juice of one lime. Lime always kind of counterbalances the sweetness. Um, if it's not a super ripe cantaloupe and you want it to be a little bit sweeter, you can add like simple syrup or agave nectar. Um, and then that's it. I was just like drinking this over ice um, with a little bit of vodka. So if you're making this in a tall glass, I would say add one to two ounces of vodka, or you could also add like tequila, whatever you like. Um, I think vodka pairs nicely with it. Um, and then if you wanna be super fancy, a mint sprig at the end. But that's it. A, a, a spiked okay. cantaloupe agua fresca. Would right. you drink that? Uh, yeah. Well, I definitely probably wouldn't strain my own fruit as much as I would love to. I'll be honest, <laughs> it probably wouldn't happen. But I definitely love putting alcohol into fruity things. So mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm, all for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love cantaloupe. I love melon. I love summertime. I love all of this stuff. So I'm trying to hang on to it for as long as possible. I used to love, I mean, I do love cantaloupe. It's now become sort of like, uh, like I think I like honeydew better than I like mm. cantaloupe. And mm. I like watermelon more than I like honeydew. Mm. Um, I like pineapple probably equally as much as watermelon. Mm. Mm. Controversial. Honeydew hasn't been getting a lot of love, I feel like, in the last few years. It was always like right there side by side with the cantaloupe. But my yeah. mom would always buy cantaloupe and honeydew and she would cut it up into a fruit mm -hmm. salad. So I always had them together. Mm -hmm. And I just felt the honeydew stayed firmer. I, and like the cantaloupe gets mushy mm -hmm. in a fruit salad. So I just preferred the more firmer fruit, which is why just over time it just became mm -hmm. my, fav my favorite one. Mm -hmm. Well, over cantaloupe. I hear that firmer fruit. Okay. Um, so yeah, well, I know you would definitely drink this. I guess I should have said, would you make it? And you answered that question. <laughs> I know you would drink it. Like I totally will put it in your face. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Um, but yeah. So, um, well, you know, you could make it and not strain it and then let me know how you like it, but it's just, it's going to be a far superior drink if you strain it is what I'm saying. Um, I believe you. You are the chef. I believe everything that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. So you have a drink in your hand? Yeah. Okay. Have a drink. And so I want to hear about this, all these stories that you said that you've been talking to people about that you need my <laughs> advice on because I do give great advice. So you do. You I'm, give I'm interested great to see advice. What, what this is about exes and co-parenting and all of this. Well, okay. So one of our really good friends, um, she's divorced and... Um, and you know she's co-parenting with with her ex, and um, they have a like a seven year old. And you know I just feel like she's just been doing a great job. She's such a trooper, um, and you know even to the point where recently they had like f a, f a couple friends who had, were their friends when they were married, um, who were visiting, and like she was. I think gracious enough to um, to allow like the ex and his like new I don't know girlfriend <laughs> yeah girlfriend um, and baby you know um, to come to the house so that like it would just be like everybody would get to hang out and not be awkward for the old friends having to like choose like hanging out or whatever which I was like that's a lot it would be hard for me to like you know, be a really great host and be sitting there and offering you a glass of wine and enjoying your company in my home when like, you know, I just the whole time would be like, yeah. She's you a home wrecker. <laughs> on the, you know, knee of my ex. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'd be like, oh, but um, but I mean she's she's so like, she does such a good job of it. And um and so I was like thinking about her. And then I also recently talked to um, another bestie who is, so she's in a different situation, right? So the, the first one is, she's the first wife. This is a situation where she's the new girlfriend. So she's dating a guy who um, has two children and has, you know, his ex that he had the children with, that he was with for, about eight years and they broke up, you know, two, three years ago. And so now she's, you know, so now she's been dating him for like a year and she's always been so like, actually really excited that about how good of a dad he is. Like he takes 
Um, you know, he has the kids like joint custody. Um, you know, he's present, he's financially everything helping and all that sort of stuff. So she's like, this is great. He's like a really good dad and he prioritizes his kids. Um, but he's always like upping the ante a little with like his relationship with, um, with the mother. Like, and so, you know, now it's like they're having like family dinners regularly where like both of them are there with the kids. Um, she's not in, obviously she's not there. Um, she's not invited. Just, she's not invited. Um, and so they have like these family dinners, which they think is like a great way to create like a, a prioritizing of the kids and having them see that mom and dad get along and that they're loved and that this is a space if they want to talk to both of them at the same time. So it all sounds really great. And then, um, and then last week he like sprung on her that he was going on a family vacation, just him the mother and the two kids. And they went on a, like, got on a flight, you know, like they had two like different- to Disney World or is mm, it like a- No, no, they just, they actually came to um to New York, which is interesting. So they came oh, to okay. New York and they did all the New York sightseeing things. It is a really, if you don't live here, I mean, I live here. I, I, take, I take my kids to the Statue of Liberty. Like it's great. Yeah. Like it's a great place to come and visit, you know. Um, and so, yeah, so it was him and her and the kids. And did they share a hotel room? They did not. So they had two different hotel rooms and then they were in town for, I think, two days. And so they alternated a kid each. So one night, you know, the daughter was with the dad and then the next night the son was with the dad. And then, it, you know, so they each got to have like a night in the hotel room. So and they did weren't. Your friend they, who's dating the guy, like, did she talk to him every night during this vacation? Yep, he did check in every evening, you know, just FaceTime. Like, uh-huh. Yep, he did. Okay. He check he checked in every evening on FaceTime. But, you know, um she was already feeling a little like um, you know, wow, that they were going on this trip and then, you know, fucking social media, she had to like be a have a front seat to the trip via Insta stories and um and then of course because he was um what are you like reposting some of the mother's posts too every girl is not obviously if you see that you're gonna then you're gonna click into the into the into girl story. Yeah, yeah and see what she's posting yeah and um and it was and what just, kind of posts were they it was like you know just it was just really um a padding themselves on the back for how great of a job they're doing at co-parenting. Um, a lot of family pictures and them hanging out. And, um, you know, uh, it just, it, the tone was, um, was just like, you wouldn't have gotten the impression that they actually weren't together, to be honest, you know, the tone of it. And were there like, and there were no grandparents involved in this trip? I mean, because it seems like if you are making this a whole family effort and you aren't together, then the grandparents get involved. No, no grandparents, just the kids and, um, and the couple. So, you know, she called me and she was like, am I crazy? <laughs> like, and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think that she's crazy. And I'll tell you why I don't think she's crazy. I feel like, um, they're doing like too much. Like you, I don't think you need to go on vacations together to show your children that you get along and have mutual respect and adoration for one another and create a positive co-parenting environment. I just, I don't think that, um, that you have to go on vacation together. I, I mean, that's just me. I think that it's super easy to fall into like old patterns and, you know, you're together with someone for eight years, you got some inside jokes and some like, just some ways. And, you know, so there's maybe, th you gotta go back to like, you. there were things you liked about this person. That's how you ended up with them for eight years and, and had two kids together. So, you know, you're on vacation, you're having a cocktail, you're on va you're on fucking vacay. And so well, I yeah, just, vacation is always like a, a fantasy world. Like, yeah. you know, everything 
feels um, magical yeah. when you're not in the real thick of it actually working and and doing the regular everyday things. Um, it, re- it reminds me of like, I think this was like on our first or second episode, we talked about this when Bill Gates married Melinda mm-hmm. and like supposedly he had put into like, or not put into the agreement, but they had talked about like he was going to have a vacation every year with his mm-hmm. ex-girlfriend that he yeah. was with. Yeah, like, that was and crazy. And that's weird because they didn't have kids together. I mean, that's right. like, that definitely is doing too much. Um, you know, I... I I, I understand. I guess why I was asking what kind of vacation was, because I do think that, like, let's say they were going to, like, a Disney World, right? I do understand, and especially if you have two kids, the need for both parents to be there, because Disney World is just a lot, right? And maybe mm-hmm. one kid wants to go on, you know, roller coasters. Maybe one parent hates roller coasters. You know, like, you do mm-hmm. need that tag team. If you're just sort of like going like camping in the woods or like going, I don't know, New York, it's kind of in between. It's a cross between like, because most people are going to go to Times Square. So it's kind of like Disney World in a city. <laughs> so that's kind of like, a, I don't know what to say about that one. Um, but I think like certain vacations, I understand why you'd be together. But I also feel like ugh, there's so many levels, right? Like one, when did he, did he have a conversation with your friend beforehand? Did he ask permission i mean obviously that sounds crazy but like did he say like hey i want to do this what he did he he get any input from your friend before he made this decision to go on the vacation no it was definitely not like a collaborative decision and i think that he uh, i mean he doesn't and nor does he think that he needs to collaborate with her on those kinds of things i think that um when it comes to his children and whatever co-parenting Um, situation he has. That's more of something that he's handling with the mother. And it's more about communicate. So he feels as long as he's honest in his communication about this is what I'm going to do. It's like more of him telling her this is what he's going to do, not necessarily soliciting feedback or definitely not permission. Yeah, definitely not permission. Nobody needs permission to do anything. But it seems like when you are going away, I mean, getting on a plane and like, you know, staying in a hotel, even if it's not the same room, you want to just sort of, before that's set into motion, to sort of lay mm-hmm. outlay, like, this is what is happening. And I want to get mm-hmm. your feelings about it because by not getting the feelings to me personally, what mm-hmm. that signifies is that he may not be taking this new relationship seriously because I would think that if you were really being serious about someone, you would have that level of communication, but I don't know. I don't have kids. So maybe I'm, you know. Yeah. I mean, it also feels like, it also feels like if you have not yet fully defined your relationship, even if you've been dating for, you know, eight months, nine months, a year, a year, whatever, however long you've been dating, if you haven't officially figured out like what's, what is going on here? Is this your man? Or am I your, you know, like what is going on? Then it's a little too vague. And then, you know, now we're in a situation where feelings are going to be hurt. And, and it also makes you feel like as the girl, as the, as the girlfriend that like, you know, where do you fit in? Like, it's there's no, there's not a lot of space left for you. Well, when you said they had been dating for a year, I guess in my mind, I made the assumption that they had sort of defined where they were in the relationship. So the fact that they haven't, I mean, are we even aware that he is calling her his girlfriend? Like, have they defined it to that level where he, because if it hasn't been defined, he might still think that they're dating because dudes be like that. But you know how guys are. You know, they're like, they like go together, but they don't really go together. But one thing guys always going to make real clear is like, even if we don't go together, like, but you're not sleeping with anybody else, are you? And like, they want to be able to, they want to be able to be like, but you're not sleeping with anybody else in even without like a full, you know. Yeah, but of course, but if she is still not, if she still hasn't been, you know, defined what the relationship is, then unfortunately, I don't think she had like... What can she really say? Because Mm -hmm. then it's just a, we're just seeing each other. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of do whatever I want. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of a precarious, you know, like I definitely probably would have used that opportunity as an, as an opportunity Mm -hmm. to define before Mm -hmm. he left and got on that plane. (laughs) Right. Right. I want to make it clear. 
Right. And, and I mean, and he's 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 so patting himself on the back for the trip and how successful it was and how how happy the kids were, which I have other thoughts about that, too, because I mean, I wouldn't make that move. I personally personally feel like um, that will sort of confuse the children, <laughs> um, you know, like for mom and dad to be acting like we're just one big happy family, like always, except you don't live here and you have a girlfriend, <laughs> but like, okay. Um, I think that's hard. And maybe, you know, maybe down the road, is it a, is it a scenario where if they had significant others, like then like, does it make sense if like, if she was there? I mean, that would, I mean, I think at that level, it would be like, they'd have to be married. I mean, has she, has she met the kids? Um, I don't know. Actually, I actually see, don't know. The and there's so to that. many. See, there's so many X factors. <laughs> like, if she hasn't met the kids, they haven't defined the relationship. Like, then I kind of can understand why he probably didn't say anything because it doesn't. Again, it doesn't feel like he's taking it as seriously. Like, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so that's that's definitely. I think you know that's hindsight's 2020 now she has to like yeah, if she is like feeling some time. type of way it's clear that she needs to have a mm-hmm. conversation and say this made me uncomfortable because <laughs> or mm-hmm. i feel like i want this relationship to be x you know like she's mm-hmm. going to have to do it because uh you know clearly they haven't had that talk i mean it's just strange because like i don't know growing up you know i'm used to my parents, like, well, my parents are together, but the parents of my friends and everyone who's around me who'd gotten divorced, um, they didn't, they didn't communicate with their ex. Like, it was like, they were divorced. Like, I had a friend, you know, her, she went to her dad's, like, he would pick her up, like, he would wait in the car, she would leave and go to the car, right. he didn't come in, and, like, <laughs> they didn't have conversation, like, mm-hmm. none of that, and, like, this is, like, sort of this new, new, <laughs> new wave mm-hmm. Um thinking of relationships, which I applaud on one hand because like, I do think it's healthier because I'm not saying us like latchkey kid, Gen X kids are like Mm -hmm. healthier Mm -hmm. than the ones that, but I also like in a way, it almost feels like that you're getting the best, you're getting your cake and you're eating it too, right? Because a lot of times we break up with people, look, it's like maybe the, the sex life is gone or there's some aspect of the person we've fallen out of love with, but we might still love a lot of the other things. And mm-hmm. if you are now dating someone new, but you're able to have really an emotional, just an emotional relationship with your ex and nothing else, I don't know. They, it seems like you kind of are getting the best case scenario. Mm-hmm. Like you get to have mm-hmm. sex with someone new, but you get to mm-hmm. have the old school feelings with the person that you right. really did like. Right, right. That actually happened. In the, so in the first scenario, the couple we were talking about um, with our friend who had the the pool party and let him come with with um, with uh, with the new girlfriend, baby mama, whatever you want to call it. Um, I remember there was like a really interesting window of time where he just was like, he, he like thought they were cool. Like that, like, oh, you know, they, they weren't together anymore, but they were cool. And like, they, they they were going to be like best friends. And she was like, no, dude, like, I'm not that, I'm not your friend that you call when you like, something funny or there's some, like, I'm no longer that you don't get to have that part of me anymore. Like if we are not together, you don't get to like, also like shoot the shit with me and think we're cool. And like, talk about like the new superhero movie that's coming out or whatever. That was like something we shared in our marriage and we're not married anymore. And you have this new relationship, but he definitely tried to tiptoe into like, Oh, I'll just be besties with my ex. And then I'll have this new one over here. And I think guys um, are always going to try to lean into that if they can. I know my ex tries to lean into that. And I'm constantly recentering the conversation around our children because it will be too easy to be like, oh, you know, and, and, and my ex is funny. So I and I like to laugh. So he, t- you know, he has the same like an interesting, funny sense of humor. But I mean, we're not going to like have all these little jokes and stuff because I feel like you don't get to have that 
apart anymore. Like we are not together. But I mean, again, that's just me. And I do feel like what you're saying, where they are getting to sort of have their cake and eat it too. And it's because the, you know, the mother is allowing that and she's actually inviting that. She seems to be really into the fact that they get to have this great, wonderful family dynamic. Both of them are patting themselves on the back for what they think is excellent Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm co-parenting. And I mean, look, I wouldn't even say it would just be dudes. I mean, I I can definitely think of women who also would lean into that too. You know, why not? Like, I'm sure... Uh, you know, I don't even know why she comes to mind, but I think about Larsa Pippen for some reason. Like, <laughs> I have to imagine that Larsa Pippen, whoever she is dating now, that she constantly goes back to, well, first of all, Scotty. So he's mm-hmm. the one with the money, right? So she's mm-hmm. leaning into that because that, you know, but I'm sure they've been together forever. And I'm sure when like they're with the kids, she's acting like their old, you know, mm-hmm. couple, even mm-hmm. though she might not want to like, you know, be sleeping with them. Or maybe, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I definitely think it goes both ways. I think it's a, I think it's a personality thing. No, you're right. I shouldn't, I shouldn't even act like it's just like guys who are trying to take advantage of the situation. Cause yeah, you've got to imagine there's women out there who aren't together with a guy, but he was great and he was, uh, and he was a provider and he was a good dad and he was all of these things. And maybe you, you guys just didn't have any chemistry anymore. So she got her new young thing over here and then she's still playing house over here. So yeah, Mm -hmm. I mean, we're guilty of it too. Um, but I just, I wonder at what point do you, are you sort of sacrificing being able to have like a full, uh, relationship with someone new when you still have like your, you know, you still have one foot in this other life. And, and, and we love to say it's, it's in the best interest of the kids. And, you know, there, it's so easy to be like, this is for the kids. It's for the kids. But, I mean, you and I come from the generation of like the parents meeting up at the Walmart parking lot to do the switch off. And that's about it. So yeah. this, is, this and- is totally crazy to me. Like, it is. But- <laughs> I mean, I have a hard time. And because of that, I mean, I have a hard time even being friends with both people in the relationship, too, because, you know, I'm I am loyal so i am sagittarius <laughs> loyal so i it gets weird for me because i'm like oh well one of you is my friends first you know it's not mm-hmm. like you know you go into situations where you meet couples because those mm-hmm. those breakups like don't really affect you right like you're like i right. met you both as a couple and when you break up i'll never see you again i don't know <laughs> You're not really my friends. You're just, you're just this couple that has come along (laughs) in my life. But like when you're friends with someone and then they get into a relationship, it just, yeah, it gets, it gets weird, right? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we all would love to romanticize the idea that like breakups are, can be this like wonderful, harmonious, you know, um, remember when Gwyneth uh, and, um, and uh, conscious uncoupling with Chris Martin. Chris Martin and the conscious uncoupling and everyone, we just read that post and we were all like conscious uncoupling, never heard of it before. Like we were running to Google, like she coined something. And well, I think that, you know, her team, I don't know if she, I she mean, came up with yeah. that herself. Someone the, decided that that was going to be the, the buzzword. <laughs> someone, someone over at the goop. But I feel yeah. like that was, that was the beginning of people feeling like they could have it all. And like, you know, uh, normalize co-parenting and like, you know, revamp what it means to, you know, co-parent and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. Part of me is just like, guys, it's like chill. Like it's too much. Yeah. I mean, Angelina and Brad Pitt are doing it old school way. They are going (laughs) fisticuffs. (laughs) Contentious, contentious, just like, just like we're used to. Yeah. (laughs) They will never speak again. Some of the kids don't want to speak to some of the other parents. Like, they're not feeling each other. So I would say the more passionate the relationship, the more passionate the divorce. (laughs) I feel like half half of the um, kids are going to be. What's the oldest one? 
Um, what is the oldest one? Maddox, I think, is the oldest one. And so he doesn't have to go to the, the visits anymore. Like Brad now has 50-50, but he's like, I don't oh. I don't gotta go. Oh, I see that's he's what I'm adult. saying. Like there aren't they starting to get older. <laughs> like, what are we who what are we fighting for anymore? <laughs> like Maddox they're just can fighting actually for just... the vineyard in the castle and like they're not I don't even think it's about the kids anymore now it's like all those properties all that money that's that's what is taking so long I mean look Bill Gates I got a notification just the other day their divorce is finalized we just we talked we talked about their divorce at the beginning uh, of the start of this show mm-hmm. and the divorce is already final mm-hmm. Brad and Angelina got started getting divorced when I lived in New York I don't <laughs> like <laughs> Maybe even when I was growing up in Virginia. I don't even know when their divorce started, to be honest. I don't even know. I I think you were the one that told me that their divorce is already at this point taking longer than the amount of time that they were together. Yeah, it's... That's crazy. Yeah, but I think that's, that's crazy. pretty normal, unfortunately, because it's like if you are rich... I mean, except in Bill Gates' case where he's like, look, just, you know, take it or whatever. (laughs) When you're rich, it's like it takes so long because you're fighting over all the money. And when you're poor, it takes so long because it's just so expensive to get a divorce. Like, you know, (laughs) it's like you don't win. So let me tell you, um, of all the reasons, like, I mean, I think I just made actually I made a meme the other day because, you know, Dr. Dre, um, you know, it was announced he has to pay 300,000 in spousal support to his wife which you know look i believe owed every dime but then kelly clarkson got a judgment for almost three hundred thousand dollars a month to her ex too and i'm like Mm. i never considered kelly clarkson and dr dre in the same Mm. income bracket but maybe i mean who knows i what do i know about net worth but i just didn't think that um and also like everyone seems to say her husband is like not a good guy and the the father and you know they were doing you know things with their management company overseeing Mm -hmm. Reba you know all these things right so it's just Mm -hmm. weird that you know she's you know saying her husband was she's accusing her husband of stealing from her but she's still got to pay I know it's not the same I know spousal support and fraud and those two different things but just the fact is like can you imagine having to like even no. see that debited from your account each no, month? No, <laughs> no, Those stories came out like pretty like back to back. And I was just, you know, cause I ride for, I ride for, I'm, I'm just always going to be team girl all the time in the same breath that I was like, that's all she's getting, you know, Dr. Dre's ex. Then I see the article with Kelly Clarkson having to pay her. I'm like, she's got to pay him. Like I was literally like both sides, just talking out both sides of my, of my ass. Cause I'm just like, I just cannot fathom paying a man alimony when I live in a man's world. I, you that's know, really I, a woman's world, look, but currently still very much leaning towards men having like all of the opportunities. How dare you? <laughs> if he had been a kept man, you would hear nothing from me. If she had found this man and he had got him accustomed to a life and like, you know, think about like, you know, someone like Julia Roberts. I don't know much about her husband, but I do know she met him, I think as a cameraman on the set. Like, I don't, you know, he, he is now Julia Roberts' husband. He is accustomed to a life. If they got divorced, look, whatever they have in their agreement, I'd be like, yep, you, you kept, you had a kept man. In, in Kelly's situation, you know, she, look, she earned her money. Like, we all saw her, American mm-hmm. Idol, season mm-hmm. one. When, like, we know who Kelly, where she came from. And this guy, you know, it's not like he was poor. You know, he was doing his own thing. And now it's like he wants to go be a rancher, you know, like take this money Ugh. and go be a rancher. Like Ugh. it to me, I don't like it, the situation because it it wasn't she wasn't trying to keep a kept man. Mm. She met a man mm. who had a business mm. and a job. And yeah, it, his life got upgraded because she kept working, but he was doing mm. fine when they met. So yeah. that's why I have no. a problem with that. Yeah, that's it's going to be a no for me on paying alimony. <laughs> like I would I would be so sad if 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 
God, if that judgment came down. I just, I feel so annoyed for her. And what you referenced um, was that his father dated Reba McIntyre and apparently also defrauded Reba McIntyre. So this is allegedly, allegedly. So this is um, like clearly what this family does is find successful women and latch onto them and then defraud them. And it's just really sad. I hope that there's some sort of resolution and that this isn't the end of this story. Yeah, I mean, I like I like to believe that, you know, Kelly, clearly she has a team that is probably pretty brilliant. I'm sure she has great lawyers. And I like to think that they said, look, go ahead, let that spousal support come in because we got great evidence on this mm-hmm. fraud side and mm-hmm. we're going to get it on the other side. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like to believe is mm-hmm. going to happen. So I'll just keep um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hoping for the best for her because like, yeah. You know. <laughs> so basically never, I'm never getting married. Just kidding. Never getting married. <laughs> Well, either way, if, um, you know, we do end up moguls, <laughs> we're going to have a prenup <laughs> sign. But uh, the only way we're going to end up moguls is if we make that money. So coming up, we have the hustle of the week. Vanessa's going to tell us how to make some dough. Vanessa, how are we getting rich this week? (laughs) All right. So last week was about like how we can get our kids set up. But um, but I started just looking at all these different lists. There's all these lists on it online that you can find where it's like habits of highly successful people or sometimes they just say like, what rich people do that you don't (laughs) like it's literally like there's tons of roundup lists but i found this one um i love this blogger um her her newsletter is called poor in a private plane (laughs) she's like welcome to poor in a private plane where we live luxuriously for less we don't need a million dollars in the bank we just want to live like we do so she put out um a newsletter where she talked about um in her opinion, the top 12 things that rich people do that we should do too. And um, and it was really like a great list because it encompassed like what I saw on so many other lists. So it it's, it's everything. Um, and so I'm just going to go through some of them with you. Um, and I think some of them are like obvious, but it's always good to hear. Um, and you know, you can weigh in. You know, I love listening to you weigh in. But um, number one is that they rich people do not spend money to look rich so which is like totally true i have a friend who's um they her and her husband do very 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 well um and you know she she dresses really nice but there's nothing flashy about them there's nothing flashy about them um and you know sometimes you got to wonder if like um if you're spending all your money just to you know look like you have money that's not really smart so i what yeah that, I mean, was that if, kanye rap sorry if you aren't even getting um i feel like when i'm rich if people aren't giving me free clothes anyways then i'm not i'm not riching it right <laughs> totally totally so um so rather than spend money to look like you're rich if you don't really have the money um, you don't need that fancy car. You don't need that Gucci sweater. Like, let's not just spend money that we don't really have to look like we are rich. Um, she also talked about number two, rich people do not drive brand new cars. Um, you know, you don't have to have a brand new car. We've all heard that the car depreciates the minute you drive it off the lot. There's also benefits to leasing. If you're a business owner, lots of things, you don't need to have a new car. And also like two years ago, I paid off my, my, um, my car. And I can't tell you how rich I felt not paying (laughs) for my car every month. Like, Mm -hmm. feel I got that money back. Like now that, you know, and so I am so this person, I drive the car until the wheels fall off. And then my next car is always a certified (laughs) pre-owned. 
<laughs> every yeah. time. Every time. That's my jam. Totally. Um, who's buying a brand new car? And I also want to be clear that like, um, when I'm talking about things that rich people do, I'm not talking about the uber wealthy, okay? I'm not talking about like super, super, super crazy rich people who just literally like, you know, own yachts and drive like Lamborghinis. I'm talking about people who live a very comfortable life. And that's what we all, we're all hoping for, right? We just want to be able to do what we want to do when we want to do it. Like that to me is what being rich is, is to be able to really enjoy my life, enjoy my friends and my family and not be worried about like money every five seconds. Like that's, you know, I don't have to have a billion dollars. Like I'm cool. I don't got to go to space. Like I don't have to do that kind of stuff. So let's just all be on the same page about when we use the word rich. Um, number three is rich people invest, which we've talked about so many times on the show, whether you have a little bit of money or a lot of money, you know, when you do come up on a little bit of something, make sure you're investing it. Um, and we've had this conversation many times on the hustle. Um, also rich people invest in quality items over quantity, which I think is like one, you and I have talked about this before. Um, you know, like I would rather, save up for the really nice thing. Um, she uses the example of like a nice vacuum cleaner rather than like buying, cause as a matter of fact, this is so funny cause I was trying to ship you your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> cause you had a, cause you, do you remember like you moved to LA and it all happened really fast. So you're, for the listeners, your, your storage unit is like five minutes from me. So, and I have access to it. So periodically I can go check and see if there's anything that you need and ship it to you. And you were like, I really want my vacuum cleaner. And I went to the UPS store and it was going to be so much to ship it. And I know how fucking annoying that was because you invested in a really good vacuum cleaner. You have two cats. You want to have a really good vacuum cleaner. And not going to get the the $50 one because it's going to break. And so if you wait and save and get the thing that's really good over the long term, not having to like buy five vacuum cleaners, having a really good one that lasts you for eight, nine years is a better investment. So for sure. I feel like vacuum cleaners, couches and beds are like the three mm-hmm. main things in my house that like, I don't care. I will save up and I'm going to get the one that mm-hmm. I want because like they're just, mm-hmm. hey, I, I spend so much time with those three things specifically. Totally. <laughs> totally. I feel this. I mean, I could go on and on. I feel the same way about knives and cookware and appliances and like, you know, there's just so many things that like I, I am, I will go without and I will save my little pennies so that I can get the, the good one. And I know that it will last me. I'm I'm such a nerd about looking at people's warranties. And, um, you know, I, I was gifted a Vitamix blender by um, a client literally 12 years ago. And um, when I was a brand ambassador for um, Quantrell, the liqueur, and I did a class for them and they sent me this beautiful Vitamix and I love it. And recently, like the lid got kind of weird. So I reached out to Vitamix and they were like, cool. We'll send you another one. I mean, that's awesome. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay, that's all I had to do. Like, he literally was like, pick up the bottom, give me the serial number off the bottom, send me your address, and then they shipped me another one. Like, because that's you know. So I'm a nerd as far as like looking for those kinds of companies. That luggage I know, might do like, that too, because that's another thing. It's mm-hmm, like save up for good luggage. Mm-hmm. Because I will say that I haven't, and I like, I, and then you end up with like four rolling suitcases in your closet <laughs> and each one of them you look at and you're like, well, I can't use that one because the zipper always busts. And no, I can't use that one because it's too big totally. for the overhead. It's like so annoying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is Whereas so our friend true. Georgia just has this one really, really nice one mm-hmm. that she always brings and I'm always jealous. And I'm like, I'm going to save up and get that exact suitcase. Yes, she's always really good with um, luggage. I remember she was the first friend. I remember when the when the suitcases started coming with those 360 wheels. I was like so jealous that she yeah. had um, <laughs> that she had. I was like, this is great. So um, fancy. So fancy. Um, number five is that rich people read a lot. They con- they're constantly um, educating themselves on just like ways to level up. I mean, we talk about it all the time, but like, you know, it, it could be 
it could it could literally be 50 cents like hustle harder hustle smarter like any just constantly like looking at um what's going on out there how to level up how to make your money work for you you have to kind of like stay on top of it um Number six is rich people live beneath their means. And this is hard, right? This is hard because like, um, <clears throat> I mean, you got it. You want to spend it. I got it. Like, I mean, how many times have you felt like the money was just burning a hole in your pocket? You're like, I got this money. I had this great job. You know, like what the, I remember when I won that $20,000 on Rocco's and like, they were like, oh, the I wasn't going to get the check until after the episode aired. And I taped the episode months before it aired. So then the annoying part was I was the first episode in production, but I wasn't, I didn't air till episode six. I was like, ah. So every time I kept waiting and waiting. And finally one day, it just a plain white envelope. It wasn't like, it didn't scream anything at me. I just, I, I think I like left it in the stack. And then like a couple days later was like opening my mail. And there was just a check from, NBC, Bravo, you know, $20,000. Girl, I just, I, I wanted to go buy everything. Like, oh, I remember I was there. <laughs> I was like, I'm rich. <laughs> like, But, you know, just because you got it does not mean you have to spend it. Save it. Invest it. Think about, like, how you can make, how can you turn this 20 into into 40? You know what I mean? Like, so um, definitely, like, like, constantly, like, trying to, live beneath your means. You might be able to afford $4,000 rent, but maybe just get an apartment that's $2,000. Or if it's if you can afford $2,000, find an apartment that's $1,500. I don't know. Um, but yeah. And then number seven, man, num number seven, like totally gets me every time. Rich people do not have debt. Like they don't have debt. Like I Like they don't have student loans and credit card bills and car payments and all like think about all the stuff that like is in the debt category that like they aren't paying those things and i yeah, always that one though i can argue though you know uh, there's a lot behind that i would say that sometimes people who experience debt don't get uh the benefit you know i think about our friend you know a lot of people who go to medical school you know, they come out mm -hmm. making, you know, $300,000 a year, mm -hmm. but they have, you know, $450,000 right. in student loans. Mm -hmm. And so they're mid, they're mm -hmm. doing like the midnight, you know, whatever shift. But, you know, we had our friend and, you know, his parents had were wealthy enough so that he didn't have student debt. So it was like he came out to be a doctor and he can like just make money. And so I just think that like, you know, there is some sort of yeah, like, you no, know. For mm. sure. So that one, it's like, I get it. Yes, everyone knows you shouldn't be in debt. <laughs> but there's also no, reasons totally. why some people don't yeah. have debt and others don't. For sure. And like we've talked about, like, you know, these kids in, 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 who who get to start life already on third base and like, yeah, like you're just like, oh, OK. And the rest of us have student loans. And, you know, of course, of course, we're doing everything we can to make it different for our kids and try to set them up different so that they don't have to head into it like the way that we did. But even like putting student loans to the side because it's almost a whole nother category, but like just not having like, don't, if you don't, if you can't buy it in cash, then don't buy it. Like if you can only buy that thing that you want, that frivolous thing that you want, but the only way you're going to get it is on credit, maybe don't get it. You know, use the credit cards for like what they're there for. That's all I'll say. Um, and number eight, rich people budget. We talked about that before. Um, number nine, rich people love their job, which I was like, okay, do they, does everybody, I don't know. But I think the essence of what she was trying to say here is just that like, when you do love what you do, you tend to want to like rock it out and like do a good job and like win at it. I can't say everybody like loves their job. Some people have like a very corporate whatever. Yeah. You know? And again, I push back on that. <laughs> Yeah. Only because, I mean, obviously, you know, part of what I do is like, you know, think forward society, which is this whole idea of like, you know, in the creative space and like in creative spaces specifically, it is very difficult. You know, people mm -hmm. who want to be designers, you know, they have to intern, at least they used to, like for free if they want to work for really good mm -hmm. designers. And only people who can afford to live in major cities like New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco for 
no money for mm-hmm. months and months and months get afforded those opportunities so it's like again yes if you if you if you love right. your job it probably is a lot easier it's a lot easier to like your job when you don't aren't forced to, to just well, taking <laughs> i mean i'll tell you so number 11 and i'll jump back to 10 number 11 is she says you know that that rich people are risk takers again you have the luxury to be a risk taker because so same same i mean yeah, I, same, I, I'm, same. I i'm i'm eye to eye with you on oh that my one God. so what is the number 12 be rich <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like we're getting to, basically. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Well, I skip. I skip number ten, which was my favorite, which was just coming from a just to practice um, from a place of gratitude for like what you do have, and I that's something I do all the time, and I try to do with the kids is like you know what were you grateful for today, and you know you definitely have a more rich mindset when you practice gratitude, um, and I, I'm a I'm a person that keeps a gratitude journal. So like, I believe in that. So that was probably my, the, my favorite of all of the things that she said, but okay. So her final uh, rounding out the list is not, it's not be rich, but it is, it is <laughs> rich people surround themselves with other successful people. You know what? See, here's, here's, you know, this reminds me of when I was trying to get you to do the billionaire uh, morning routine with me. Um, which was this viral video that went around of like the the like things that most rich people do, successful people do every morning. And you were like, well, that's like, I ain't doing all that. I got kids, I, you know, and everybody else. I mean, they were definitely like giving me shit like, oh, this is going to take you forever. And I was like, no, I can get this done in like 90 minutes. No, it's definitely three hours of your, your morning if you really do everything. And everybody was like, again, this is what rich people who, who don't have to go right. to work and, right. and 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 have nannies take care of their kids and right. like can do I, you know look I, I got a lot of great things out of it you know the the, the, <laughs> the movement the smoothies the uh I, you know like certain things I really did love um doing but uh yeah I mean you know, rich people have time to do that shit for three hours every morning you're like you're like my rich lady uh, morning routine actually takes me all the way to lunchtime yeah so I decided I'm just gonna do a, a millionaire morning routine because like we said we don't need to be billionaires no I just need to be no. a millionaire no. and let me how can we whittle down this morning routine yeah. to that yeah and that, that's yeah. where I'm at right now it's just not a thousand there that's all I'm saying I just you know yeah I want to get beyond I want to yeah. get yeah I want to get to eight figures right yeah. like you know six figures remember when we were like kids and it's like oh i want to make six figures we were like thought that was big money i'm gonna make six figures and then and then we moved to new york where six figures <laughs> basically gets you a studio mm-hmm. in some maybe yeah, mm-hmm. brooklyn i love brooklyn i like you know but you get a little studio and you know you might be lucky enough to get a uh, fire escape so i love that you um, skip you skip right over seven figures that is so cute you were like i mean six used to be great but let's talk about eight like you just <laughs> Skip right over well, seven. I just want the universe to know that I am super okay with like $5 million. <laughs> like, okay, I would like to see I'm a fine. 10 in front of it. Oh, because look, we had this conversation with our friend and we really, we really thought about it. We said, they were like, oh, all you need is like a million dollars to retire. And we were like, and then do what? Because we were like, in our mind, retirement meant like we were going to be like, maybe on yachts, not our own yacht, but like maybe going on yacht vacations or going to like an island or maybe going to, you know, another country. And like, you can't do that with just a million dollars. Like mm-hmm. we're going to need like, I don't mm-hmm. know, 25 million dollars. It's fine though. It's fine though. Listen, universe, <laughs> listen to me. Don't listen to her. Universe, <laughs> give me, give me five and I'm a, I'm a double my money and make it stack. We, and then I'm just going to keep doing that. Like, it's fine. It's fine. But <sighs> I, I love, right. I, well, I, we're gonna I try love it. it. Ultimately, we are just going to try to get rich. Okay, <laughs> fine. Um, all right, we'll stick around um, because actually we do need to cool down because my AC is off and I am burning up. So go <laughs> stick around for the cool down. <laughs> Kiki, we have arrived at 
the best part of the show, which is the cool down. Um, I'm always interested in what fun, funny, interesting story you have for us. And what do you have this week? Well, we were talking about exes. So I thought this was only appropriate. You know, there was, it was like a few, maybe a couple months ago when, um, you know, Jennifer, uh, uh, Lopez who started mm-hmm. dating Ben Affleck and mm-hmm. then out of nowhere Diddy who I believe goes by love now but we just gonna refer to him as Diddy because mm-hmm. that's how we know him mm-hmm. posted this throwback photo mm-hmm. of him and Jen holding hands and walking <laughs> and like the you know internet exploded right I think mm-hmm. you know internet crashed because everybody was like oh yes this is the reach back <laughs> we want to see yes let's yes get it get it um you know some people were excited some people were like no this is like the dude who got her shot at in the club like no it was like (laughs) anyways it brought us back to a a simpler or more chaotic time however you remember it Mm -hmm. anyways um diddy came out today just in an interview with vanity fair where he said he was not trolling when he posted that picture Mm. that jen is just his friend and that's Mm -hmm. simply all it was Mm -hmm. um he's like here's my thing Oh, he also threw in, and in this interview, I thought this was interesting, too. He said that the only woman who could have ever made him transform from perpetual bachelor to married man would have been the late Kim Porter, who's the mother of his six children. But three, you know, three, when, three of his six children. Three of his six children. So, mm-hmm. you know, him just saying, like, I wasn't trolling anyone. Look, that to me sounds like a man who didn't get a response mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. now is, like, trying to mm-hmm. backpedal a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because let's like mm-hmm. if Jen had given him any sign, you don't think that he would have been um, please. Come on. Please. Come on. Come on. Come Diddy, on. you ain't fooling nobody. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to save face a little because it didn't like it didn't work. But I mean, you can't <laughs> knock him for trying. Like you cannot knock him. Because guys no. know guys know that if they can just get like a little like a little bit like a little bit they will they will run with it and so he was just minding his own business and you know the breakup and the subsequent getting together with Ben it happened so fast he was like hold up hold up hold up she's single again and then wait hold up hold up hold up I didn't get a chance to throw my hat in the ring like it all just happened so fast Diddy never had it never had a chance so he was he was just trying to like lightly throw his hat in the ring but it, no my guy she's um she's not she's not interested she's no. not interested um so yeah diddy i don't know if he's even uh dating anyone i don't you know we never it kind of just like after cassie what happened i don't know well well you know he um i mean it was it was so it was so tragic when kim passed away and um i feel like what i learned from uh, from that and what he seemed to share with everybody was like Man, like life is short. If she was always the one, if she was your best friend and she, why, that you should have like, I don't know, like told her that and fought for that. Like while she was here, he clearly is a man who is filled with, with a lot of regret. And the lesson there is just to probably like follow your heart. And he has not been rumored to be dating anybody since he, was disengaged from Cassie. I haven't, I like to keep my ear to the street and I haven't heard anything about um, who he's supposed to be dating. He's just, he's like all about his kids right now. And yes, has changed his name to love officially. I think he posted a picture of his driver's oh, his tattoo. license. With, yeah, yeah. He has a tattoo down his, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, so. you know, I will say with, it, with dudes like Diddy, you know, when someone like Kim passes away and we all like she was gorgeous and we gorgeous. all thought she was cool. Mm-hmm. And now she's being held in this like angel status, right? And mm-hmm. so I I would like I would never want to be the next girlfriend because I definitely think you're always gonna be like Yeah. You're not you're not Kim. Like you're not yeah. Kim. Like nope. and so mm-hmm. yeah, it's probably a little bit like mm, Stay yeah, away. I mean, she was like a beautiful person and they and she left a, a really strong legacy. So I don't really know um, if they have these beautiful children, like those twin girls, they just get prettier every year. Like I, 
Uh, good luck to whoever's dating him next. Um, good luck to that woman. I'm and sorry listen, to that woman. <laughs> I, do, I do not know that woman. I am sorry to that woman. Um, but J-Lo was like, I'm good. I'd rather just have what we had and just be friends. I got another reach back situation over here. I'm going to go work yeah. on. And he's going to so. do all the things I said. He's going to follow my lead and we're going to be all good. So we're good all over. All good over here, Diddy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right. Well, we will be back next week. It, it will be... Uh, August still. I guess that's, I was a little shocked, I think, at the beat of the show, realizing it was August. I'm like having a bit of panic about it, but it's all mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be back, back in August next week. <laughs> back, it'll still be August <laughs> next week. Um, yeah, as we inch closer to the end. But also, don't be sad because you know what? We always think of the end of summer as Labor Day, but the summer solstice is like the 20th or the 21st of September. Just because like, you know, like officially people are like back to work and back to school. There's still like that nice amount of time in September where you're kind of like still grilling on the weekends and hanging out and going to the beach and stuff. So, Oh girl, we, summer lasts here until like end of November. So <laughs> like you that know part I'm not so worried about. I, hate I will guts. actually probably get like a beach birthday. That'll, that'll be a first. That'll I be a first. Guts. I hate your guts. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna snow in like, in like November. <laughs> and I'll be back to like, damn it, New York. Damn it. Um, oh, I guess you'll just have to come back. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Um, that's oh, it. Man. See you next week. Follow Kiki uh, on Instagram at the talk of shame. Follow me at Vanessa Kontav. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Moms vs. Aunts is brought to you by Cafe Mom. Our theme music is composed by Coney Island Music. We want to hear from you. To give us your comments, leave us a voicemail at 929-265-0277. And we might include them in the show. You can also reach us by email at momsvaunts at gmail.com. Remember to rate, review, and follow Moms vs. Aunts wherever you get your podcasts. And for more parenting stories, real talk, and entertainment news, go to cafemom.com.